Hello, welcome to this special edition of the Balancing Act, Behind the Mystery. I'm Olga Villaverde. Today, two rare diseases. While they may not be very common, they can have devastating effects on the patient, their families, and caregivers. Let's learn more. We begin with polycystic kidney disease, or PKD. There are two types of PKD. The first is autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease, or ARPKD, which is a less common form of polycystic kidney disease and can be found in children. Then there is autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, or ADPKD, the most common type of polycystic kidney disease, and our focus here today. Now, it's a rare genetic condition, and approximately 140,000 Americans have been diagnosed with it. And there may be more who are undiagnosed. For Sarah, she knew at an early age that ADPKD would impact her future. Take a look. Quite a few people in my family have ADPKD. My mom, my grandma, my uncle, my great-grandmother, all of them have it. And I knew that I had a 50% chance of having it as well. I knew from an early age that my story and my life was going to be different. The Balancing Act traveled to Yale School of Medicine to meet with Dr. Neera Dahl, who has expertise in the diagnosis and management of genetic kidney diseases, including ADPKD. ADPKD is an inherited genetic disease. It stands for autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Autosomal means that it is inherited equally in both men and women, and dominant means that it's a dominant gene, so each child has a one out of two uh, chance of inheriting that from their parent. Um, the polycystic kidney disease, so this is a disease in which there is gradual increase in kidney cysts within the kidney, and that leads to an increase in kidney size and eventually to uh, kidney failure and the need for either transplantation or initiation of dialysis. At 19, Sarah experienced a dizzy spell, high blood pressure, and an elevated heart rate and was referred to see a nephrologist. To be officially diagnosed, I had a sonogram. I sat in my nephrologist's office and looked at those films and heard him say the words, ADPKD, and it became real. It was the first time that I started to think about what the end of this disease might mean for me. I was angry. I was sad. I was terrified. I was so upset. I just, I didn't understand why my parents would have children knowing that they could pass this disease on to me. I wish I had done things differently, but I didn't. I chose to ignore the fact that ADPKD was real, it was here, and it was in front of me right now. I didn't do anything that would have actually helped my symptoms. When they would pop up, I would manage them and then pretend they didn't exist. And I started emotionally eating as a way to cope with my diagnosis. The heavier I got, the more I was straining my kidneys. The symptoms of ADPKD that are attributable to the kidney can be development of high blood pressure, uh, having more urinary tract infections or cyst infections, having kidney stones, having flank or abdominal pain to those enlarging cysts. And then outside the kidney, the cysts can be growing in the liver and sometimes that can cause feeling full before you've eaten a full meal or with reflux. Other symptoms could be concern about the intracranial aneurysms and getting that checked. It's important that if you have a family history of ADPKD, to talk to your family, get screened, and speak to a doctor about your prognosis. ADPKD is primarily diagnosed by clinical imaging, either an ultrasound, CT, or MRI of the kidneys. The times genetic testing is most useful is either in someone who has an equivocal imaging result 
or someone with no family history where we're not certain of the diagnosis, or in a patient who's considering pre-implantation genetic diagnosis where they want to make sure that they're not passing the gene on to their, their children. Everyone with a family history should get that first imaging test, routine blood pressure measurements, routine urine analysis to see if they're developing blood in the urine. And that helps in terms of life planning, in terms of thinking about how this disease is likely to affect you. Over 10 years after seeing her first nephrologist, Sarah started to take charge of her health and accept her diagnosis of ADPKD. I sat down with my nurse practitioner. She told me that if I didn't do something, I was gonna be a diabetic. This wasn't an if, this was a when. And that with the ADPKD, I was headed straight for dialysis. I knew that I had to do something about how I was taking care of myself. My weight would disqualify me for a kidney transplant in the future, which was a big deal. I had been treating this like it was nothing, like the future was so far away I would never get there. It forced me to take a second, breathe, accept that I had this disease, and find a way to move forward. With diet and exercise, I got my health and my weight under control. I know where this disease will lead, and I'm going to do everything I can to live my life along the way. ADPKD is a progressive disease. Dr. Dahl describes what this can mean for patients. One of the things that tells us how quickly someone is likely to progress is the size of the kidneys. In clinic, uh, we will look at those images with the patients and review what their kidney size is, what their total kidney volume is, and how that may impact their likelihood of progression when we think they may develop end-stage renal disease, when we think they may start to lose kidney function. And that's really one of the things that we've been able to do now in the recent years that we haven't been able to do before. And we can often do that before there's any loss of kidney function. And one of the reasons we really encourage patients to come in and see us early. A lot of people have a lot of fear regarding the potential diagnosis of ADPKD. Oftentimes they've seen what that disease has done to aunts or uncles or to their parents and they're, they're concerned about that um, and don't know what it would mean for them to also have that disease. We really wanna uh, reassure patients that there is more now that we can do compared to 10 years ago or 15 years ago. It was extremely difficult to share my diagnosis of ADPKD with my husband. I knew that having this disease meant I could pass it to our future children. It has been a struggle for me to know if I wanted children or not. I'm actually pregnant and we're expecting our first child, so we decided to take the leap and go for it. It would be lying to tell you that I wasn't scared. I'm terrified and I will feel horrible if my child inherits this disease from me. Today I'm in so much of a better place than I was. I know how to manage my health and my weight. I have a new perspective on life and on what it has in store for me. What I encourage people to do is to come in and to become well-educated. There's a lot of information available on ADPKD, so we'd really encourage you to come in and take control of that disease. My advice to another patient with ADPKD this will never define who you are. It's a part of you, but you can still do fabulous, great things with your life. I'm gonna do everything I can to stay healthy and to just live my life along the way. It won't stop me from doing everything that I want to do. For more information about autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, you can visit pkdinfo.com and pkdcure.org. You can also visit our website, thebalancingact.com. We'll be right back.